blackmail. They're sending a signal. I think what they're trying to say to the, the, the in, in, in some ways you could view it as a compliment to the U.S. side, which is they're trying to say, look, we know this is high on your agenda. We're working some things out. We're not going to announce a formal resolution or formal move at present, but we have this in track, and we're just trying to signal, and we're willing to make a public statement, so we're going on the record. I, I think it's a reassurance mechanism. It's not a bad idea for the Chinese to make that kind of signal at the front end. Okay, at the front end, right? Yeah. So if they've addressed well, it means this. Well, they're saying, look, I, I, we don't want to spend the next 48 hours just having a major quarrel on exchange rates. Let's get into that issue, and let's talk how far we can go. But I can tell you there's there's some news ahead that I cannot announce today. So it, ah, does, it does take some of the steam out of the issue. I see. So you're in the know, right? There's some news coming up, do you think? Well, I'm making a reasonable supposition. <laughs> making, okay. So yes. what do you think? They, they're not going to move. I mean, from all accounts, it looks like they're not going to move here at this uh, they will not move. They will not move at the negotiations themselves. That's right. right. But maybe G20 in Toronto? Where yeah, it's or no, it'll be standalone. Look, when he says controllability and gradualism, controllability means, look, we're going to do it on our terms, our announcement, our way. We're not going to do it in an international setting. It's our currency, our decision. So exercising that sovereign prerogative is very important for them. So they're going to do it apart from any international forum. They will just take a day and say, we're moving 3% or 4%. Yeah. Okay. Usually it's a Friday, right before right. the weekend, sure, right? Sure. They don't want to disturb the markets. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you think they'll happen in, say, the, the summer months? Yeah, you I do. Know, I, think, I think, in fact, there's a strong political requirement that they do take some step could be single digits, but some step in the next few months. They okay, in the next few months yeah. or so. All right. Okay, let me just ask you about the other issues, of sure. course, uh, at the SNED, yeah. shall we say. It's hard to say with the ampersand that's there. Right. Uh, but, you know, we're looking at restrictions for trade. I mean, right, that's a trade big barriers. Focus. Yep. Trade barriers. I talked to Commerce Secretary Locke, who yep. says that uh, this is hampering innovation as well. Yeah, boy, yeah. With boy, China yeah. only buying China made uh, technology. Yeah, they've got this national uh, innovation imperative in China, which concerns a lot of U.S. companies. If they're going with their own tech standards and if they're exclusionist, exclusive or exclusionist, uh, it can hurt U.S. exporters mm -hmm. and so forth. And intellectual property is another area that can yeah. long foot Americans. Now, right. now uh, how much do you think Korea is going to factor into these discussions yeah. as well? Well, those are the economic finance issues. Those yeah. are the big ones. Currency, IP, uh, 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 in, in national innovation, trade, right. right. On the foreign policy, Korea will be big and Iran will be big. We just went through this U.N. exercise with the sanctions on Iran right. where the U.S. in some sense was wrong-footed, not so much by China, but by Brazil and India, mm -hmm. uh, although China w was somewhat acquiescent, somewhat accommodationist. Uh, but the United States wants to develop a working relationship with China and Iran as well as more pressing Korea.